Let me ask you a question. How many times have you ever wanted to collaborate with people in your workplace or people in other businesses? And you found that there are always people who are getting their own way and you are feeling a little bit taken advantage of. Why? Because a lot of people in business are bullies. And today we have the incredible Marina Flick. And she's the CEO of Mind Heroes. And she has worked in HR for many, many years. And she has so much experience dealing with a variety of people. And she has created a method specifically for people to deal with bullies. And this is why I'm so excited to have her on um, Lily.Global uh, today to talk about the bully-proof formula for self-empowerment. Because when we are empowered fully, what happens is that we can deal with bullies regardless of where they are. A lot of times they could be closer to us than we think. They could be part of our family. They could be part of our workplace. They could be in supermarkets. They are everywhere. And all you have to do to have better relationships and become more successful as an author, entrepreneur, business owner, or employee, all you have to do is just master these techniques for empowering yourself to deal with bullies so you can get more win-win situations regardless of where you are. So Myrna, tell us about this method that you have created and um, the I stop method, and how does that work? Sure, thank you, Lily, I appreciate that. And it's something that over 30 years of HR experience that I have run into people who will intimidate and bully, but yet you run into those who are just uh, great to get along with. But I started formulating this, and actually when I wrote a children's book series, because you gotta get to the children early on to help lay that foundation for values. But the I stop method seemed to work. And the I stands for ignoring the bully. Sometimes you can just pretend you don't hear them. However, they will persist. They will be in meetings and they may be the guy sitting right across from you or the gal, you know, that's, you know, kitty corner, wherever they are in the room. But sometimes if you can ignore them, that will help because they want a reaction sometimes. They want to intimidate. And so ignoring them will help a lot. And then the S stands for stand up for yourself because you don't need to take that if you're brave and you're confident and you stand up to them and let them know that you aren't going to allow it by sharing facts or saying, I would love to have that conversation with you. Let's just stay a few minutes after everybody else leaves, but just look for a way to stand up for yourself. And then T is taking the high road. Oh my gosh. I mean, we all want to show integrity and take the high road. You don't want to have someone go, oh, well, you totally went down in the mud with that person and you don't need to do that. So stand up, you know, take a high road. Another thing is open up. That's the O. And that is to have a conversation with probably colleagues or other individuals and say, have you experienced this with this individual? But then at some point, you may even want to go and talk to that person and say, you know, I think we just need to have a conversation and let's open up the dialogue and let them know that I want to resolve this. I want to be a team player. Let's work together. So P is actually the plan ahead. And that's part of what I've been talking about. If you know you're going to anticipate or being in a meeting with that person or you have to confront them, make sure you have a plan. What am I going to say? What am I going to do? Remind myself that I want to ignore them. I want to stand up for myself. I want to take the high road. I want to open up and I'm going to plan ahead. So it's imperative that we have that little process in our mind to take care of ourselves, especially when, again, someone's trying to intimidate you or bully you. Thank you so much. Can I ask you, and how did you come up with this system? What kind of led you to create this particular yeah. system? And why is bullying so important to you as a, as a cause that you want to, you know, share more awareness for? Sure. Well, there are so many resources. If you Google or search the internet, there's hundreds of thousands of resources. And I initially wanted to create something again for children. And so I thought, what can I do? Kids 
know what a stop sign looks like. And so if I call it, I stop, then it's something that is memorable to them and easy for them. So it works better even for adults because we can add more into it. But that was what was really important is to come up with something memorable and easy and quick and something that um, can stop them in their tracks. So it's like, I stop. It's all about empowerment of myself and other people. Okay. Very good. So I do think it's, it is very memorable. And um, so I think you have a few books already that are out, right? And um, can you tell us the name of the, of the books? Sure. If you go to Amazon and just type in my name, Myrna Flick, because it's a short name, you will find also a series called Discovering the Difference. And Discovering the Difference is to teach important distinctions and life distinctions to children. And the books were written, I have the first one, Being Silly, Not a Bully, is about fun teasing versus bullying. And the other one is being proud, not loud. And that's teaching children how to be a little bit more humble, but they need to be proud, but they don't want to be a boaster or a bragger because we've all had those friends or you're in a conversation or a room that somebody's consistently always bragging and that's annoying. So again, I wanted distinctions for them. So it, if you were to go again to Amazon, type in Myrna Flick, you will see uh, the, the two books uh, in that series. Thank you so much. And how did you create this? Like, how did you come up with this concept? I mean, aside from, okay, sure. you make it memorable, but what made you kind of like come up with this thing? Was it because you were dealing with this in the workplace and it was something you just couldn't bear or you just saw it happening to many of your work colleagues and it was impacting yeah. you negatively as well or you had to deal with a lot of problems because <laughs> people were not, you know, um, they were not getting along and they were not doing the work they were supposed to do because they, they were not getting productive or what was it that kind of led you to create this system? Sure. So in one of my uh, positions, we created a leadership training program. And in that we had to address these issues. Then everyone kept saying, well, you know, they learn it when they're six years old or seven years old. And I thought, bingo, I need to get to the children when they're more of a blank slate, because these kids are going to be our future leaders. And you know, if we could get one's children who have a more of a foundation of values and you know, around honesty, integrity, all that, they're going to be such better leaders and such better employees and coworkers. So that's where it started. And then I did a lot of research and found out there's a lot of resources out there that teachers, educators, parents will use, but they're all instructional. And I wanted something where the child could experience it. So these stories are written where they read it on their own, but they can read it with their parent or educator also. And actually many teachers have read them in their classrooms and have spoken to several of the classes on Zoom. But if they can have an experience, it's much easier for them to remember it rather than being told even the I stop method rather, you know, so we, you know, being a part of the story and drawing them in helps. And then plus at the end of each book, I have questions that educators and parents can answer. Plus there's a little section for the child to go through and answer the questions. So I felt that it had to be more experiential for the child, not just an instructional piece. Thank you so much. And what about for adults? I think you mentioned you have a course uh, that is upcoming or it's already running about the same uh, topic. What um, what does that include? What what can um, adults learn there? Sure. I presently don't have the course. I've started it. I have the framework. Uh, however, other priorities will take us away from it. But I'm hoping to develop that and get that out and I'll communicate on LinkedIn to my network there too and, and promote it. But I think a lot of it is I'm focusing really on the children right now because it's such a passion of mine. It's so important that we help create children that have the right values, again, so they can be our great leaders of the world. Thank you so much. And if you were to share one sentence that, uh, let's say, a child should use in order perhaps to get self-empowered, what would you say that sentence is? Oh, that's a good one. Because right now there's so many and the company I created is called The Mind Heroes. And so it's all about the empower their mind. And I think if they could think 
I am in control and I have the power and I can resolve this. So it's more like a, I can, I can do this. I can, you know, take care of the situation. I am powerful. And so maybe that's more like it. It's I am powerful and they can feel like they can resolve anything in their life. Thank you so much. I think um, there, there must be some sort of balance, right? Because there are, I think the, the source of, of, of some bullies is actually that they believe they are too powerful and, uh, you know, they disregard yeah. other children or, you know, um, or I guess in the workplace, you know, mm -hmm. other colleagues. And um, so I'm wondering, is there some sort of, uh, do you, I mean, how important do you, do you see for example, uh, affirmations being part of a routine of a leader, whether it's, you know, children or, or adults, how important do you think that is? Is it important to, um, for um, people to um, say a lot of affirmations that are empowering for them? Yes, I love affirmations. And it's, it's really a springboard for the future as, you know, as adults, we create uh, vision boards, for instance. And so there's a lot of affirmations on a vision board. And so to do that will help. And you mentioned something earlier. I think it is important that they're humble about this because they can say, I am powerful, but not in the way I'm going to intimidate or hurt other people. And that's really important too, because that's why the second book is being proud, not loud. It's like humble and proud of your accomplishments, but I'm not a boaster or bragger or someone that intimidates other people. So there is that happy blend that you need to teach them. So back to that, affirmations are so powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I do think that there has to be some sort of balance, right? From an angle of, okay, first, yes, empower yourself to be the best version of yourself without kind of intimidating other people. And um, I think another element that I think is quite important is maybe forgiveness, right? Because when yes. you have uh, bullying from another individual, whether it's in a workplace or at school, you still have, um, in order to move on, you kind of need to have self-forgiveness and also forgiveness for the other person as well. And I think that if you don't have that in place, potentially, then it's like you're recreating that everywhere, right? Yes. And that's really important. You hit on something like the O, which is open up, is to have a conversation with that bully because the people who are being bullies have been hurt in some way. And so they're lashing out at another child or someone who's weaker because they're trying to make themselves feel better. So if you can open up to that bully and try to be a friend and say, I forgive you, I'm sure you must be going through stuff on your own. I go, again, it's age appropriate dialogue, but you know, opening up and, and forgiving someone is so powerful. Yes. And I find that the opposite it, uh, can also cause a lot more harm than good, right? Yes, yes, definitely. Because again, they're hurting. If you look at research or think about it, those who are intimidating or bullying have probably been raised that way or been around people that have done that to them. I'm saying also that let's say people who don't forgive because they don't mm -hmm. forgive, let's say even if you were hurt personally, if okay. you end up not forgiving that person, it's like you're you're carrying that with you. It's like they have a space in your mind forever. It's almost yeah. like you're holding garbage in your in your mind, right? Absolutely. Oh, you hit on a very good point. That is so true. It's like we all need to be able to forgive and forget in a sense and move on and not live in the past or carry that baggage with you. So definitely. Uh, Yes, I agree with you. And do you have any technique that someone could use to forgive and forget a bit uh, easier? You know, mine was more of an affirmation uh, mantra to say, I forget, you know, every morning I'd wake up and I'd go through my prayer or whatever you go through. And that is saying, you know what, I forgive my sister and I love my sister. I forgive the mailman and I love the mailman. It's like, I forgive X, Y, Z person and I love them. So it's like trying to forgive and love at the same time. Thank you. And what about saying sorry? How important is that for a future leader or for a current leader, sure. uh, whether it's at school or in the, in the workplace? That's really important too, to apologize. 
and say sorry, but also to mean it because we've all been on the side where someone goes, sorry, and they really don't mean it. So it's really about having really apologizing and meaning it and just, uh, you know, wanting to make it better. So maybe there's even creating a plan saying, I am so sorry. I interrupted you. It, it's just, you know, it's all on me. It's something I do in the future. I'm going to just try to not. And if I start to interrupt you again, let me know because I want to stop. So yeah, it's really saying I'm sorry, but meaning it. Mm -hmm. I do. I do agree. And I do think it's, it's, uh, it's uh, interesting what you did with uh, creating this book, because I think um, from a really young age, we are, you know, we are helping children to become future leaders of tomorrow. And um, we want them to have the right values because they are going to be the ones that are going to influence the next generation and ourselves as well. Yes. Um, so I think it's it's really amazing what you've already done by publishing those books and sharing them with as many people as possible. Um, and it's interesting how, you know, through that work that you did, you are creating leaders that influence people positively and they are not just there to intimidate and do whatever, you know, they desire. And I, I do I do admire that work that you're doing and um, really um, a massive congratulations for it. And um, I think bullying is a massive, massive topic, right? Mm -hmm. Because I think that it can cause so much damage and, you know, there's a lot of awareness around it. Uh, but I think that a lot of times, you know, something that uh, could be said in a hurry, something um, uh, relatively irrelevant for you could become a really massive emotional trauma for another person. And I know yes. this because I remember when I was really young, um, I can't remember, I think I was an, at, at an event and with my brother and he did something, I can't remember what exactly. And I just kind of said, you know, passing by, oh, you're so stupid, you know, of course, I, or, or silly, or you're so silly, or you're <laughs> so stupid, right? And he took it so personally, like he talked about it for years after that. And he was saying like how I embarrassed him and how humiliated he felt and all this kind of thing. And I didn't feel that, you know, like I, it didn't mean much to me. It seemed kind of like irrelevant. It was a passing kind of comment that I made. I didn't really mean it. And still it had such a massive emotional trauma on him. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, you know, understanding that, that, you know, um, we all think differently. We all perceive things differently. And how can we make sure that, you know, our comments and what we do in our actions, the things that we do do and the things that we don't do, mm -hmm. um, how can we, can we make sure that those things are not perceived as a bullying act? Because sometimes even, you know, not doing something when you said you were going to do it or doing something, um, you know, in a, in a, maybe in a hurried way or in a, in a way that it's not perceived as the right way, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, people are very sensitive nowadays to a tone, a look, you know, there's a lot of nonverbal communication that kind of goes with something that you said or did or how you moved or how you looked, or there's so many elements that kind of can be considered bullying, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely. And you've said so much in that and, mm -hmm. and a lot of you know, you know, runoff points that we could go on it. But one of them that you kind of hit on is uh, integrity. You know, there's a lot of, you know, underbelly of the integrity that a person has. But, you know, to answer your question about uh, that, I, I think it's almost that emotional intelligence hat that we need to wear every single day. And when a person has more emotional intelligence, you're going to pick up on those cues that maybe what you said hurt them. Um, or bothered them. And so as adults, we can pick that up and maybe say, hey, you know what, can I just chat with you and just say, hey, I'm, you know, I'm not sure if, you know, what I said um, offended you and I didn't mean that. But that's, you know, for children to have that hat is really difficult. Um, so they may say something, you know, like, oh, you're so stupid or whatever and, uh, and hurt someone. And it's a tough, there, there's so many ways we could take that question. I don't even know where to go with it. <laughs> yes. And I think the other thing that I find is that 
You know, for example, when someone says uh, something that appears to be limiting you in some way in the workplace or at school, you know, when, when someone says, oh, you're not this or you can never get that or you're never going to do this because this is what you do, right? All of those very uh, seemingly harmless things, mm -hmm. they hurt so deep. It's, 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 it's so ridiculous, really, when you think about it, how something so small can have such a massive impact. So how can you, you can say, protect yourself from mm -hmm. uh, bullies? How do you protect yourself from, uh, you know, hurtful comments that, mm -hmm. you know, seem, you know, very irrelevant and so on. And then they become so crushing and they cut so deep. How can you protect mm -hmm. yourself against bullies? Well, and it is difficult because we can't protect ourselves. It's going to happen. But if you can just remind yourself, you know, that's only their opinion. And, you know, what they think of me or what they say about me is none of my business. I mean, we hear that a lot. So if you can just go detach from it and go, that's just what they think, because I have enough self-confidence in myself, knowing I'm doing the right thing. I'm a good person. I'm not going to do that. So maybe trying to detach from those comments or opinions of somebody else and just say, I am not that person. Or recognizing the fact that you've got accomplishments and think of something positive or contribution or relationship or something that you had to like neutralize it. But it's like, you know, a person can't get caught up in that. Otherwise, we would never get any sleep at night because we'd be laying awake thinking, oh, my God, what do I do? I'm a horrible person. And so I think it's really just letting it go. Like, I am not that person. I am a honorable person. And how can you use that? a negative comment um, to and turn it into something positive for yourself. Um, I'll tell you what I mean by that. So, you know, uh, sometimes when people say something really negative about me, like some, when they used to say something really negative about me in the past, mm -hmm. um, it would hurt me really deep. But then I would kind of go maybe cry for a few days. And then I would decide, you know what? I'm going to be the best version of myself now. I'm going to yeah. prove that I'm going to, you know, prove them wrong. <laughs> so I'm not sure. Is that a good good thing to do to kind of prove them wrong? Or is that a better yeah. alternative? I think it's great because if somebody said a negative comment about you or to you, it's like, you know, you think that there might be some truth. Okay. So if you kind of rationalize and go, did I? Have I? And go, no, I'm not. Or if I did, it was not my intention. And so I think it can be powerful to, you know, process it because, you know, as adults, we do that. We let things rattle around in our heads and just, you know, process it, let it go or say, you know what, I'm going to think about this for another 10 minutes or an hour, or I'm going to think, you know, where could this have possibly happened in my life and answer that question. And then you're going to go, ah, no, it's not, it's not me. Or like, eh, you know, I do interrupt people a lot. So what can I do in the future to be a better listener or a better friend? So I think you can definitely use it as a positive. Thank you. Have you um, also um, considered the possibility that, um, I mean, is it a good idea to almost say, thank you for your opinion? And yeah. it, does, does that help at all to kind of uh, acknowledge the bully, um, you know, and by thanking them, thanking them genuinely for their opinion, and then to kind of like maybe turn that around and turn it into a into a positive thing. Is that how you would do it? Yeah, you could, depending on what it is. I mean, there might even be a situation say, you know, I would like to hear more. Tell me more, especially you don't want to make sure there's other people around because you want to have not totally embarrass that person because that can make the situation or relationship even worse. But I think you could say, you know, I want to hear more because if I'm truly that or doing that, I don't want to. That's not my intention. So I'd love to discuss it with you. You know, and then they're like, oh, wow, geez. You know, I was just making a comment <laughs> or, you know, I will tell you, or let's have lunch or whatever. Okay. So we have, um, we've already kind of like mentioned quite a lot of techniques. So it's not only the, for the I stop system, we mm -hmm. also have, uh, saying sorry, right. We also mm -hmm. have, uh, for, you know, forgiving the person, forgiving yourself. Mm -hmm. And we mentioned some other techniques as well. I do think they are all very valuable. And I think in this, these kind of techniques could be used 
for empowering ourselves in any situation, whether we are an entrepreneur, an author, um, you know, whether we work somewhere, it doesn't matter. I think it's important to be the kind of leaders that we expect other people to be. Yes. Do you agree? Absolutely. We need leaders who can influence in a positive way and not in a negative way and wipe out any negativity that our children are seeing even in the news with leaders or politicians or people doing wrong things. There's so many examples of the things going wrong. So let's teach them and focus on the things that are going right. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you.